Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today's video, we are going to learn about hyperparameters. Basically, when I say hyperparameters, today we are going to learn how we can select, how, how we can select the best value for our hyperparameters. Like when we are building a deep learning, uh, deep learning model, it may have any number of hidden layers. It may have any number of neurons. What should be the learning rate while doing the training? So there are many hyperparameters that we need to configure while creating our model. So the idea about this video is that how we choose the best value for these hyperparameters. Um, when we will choose the best value for these hyperparameter, then only we will be getting a better model and it will be doing a better uh, prediction at better prediction and it will be giving us good results. So for this exercise, uh, we are going to use one library, which is basically present uh, with Keras and it is a Keras tuners library. So this library, uh, the concept of this library is similar to the grid search CV. Uh, if you are not aware about grid search CV, grid search CV is a kind of a technique where as in we need to uh, find the best uh, best parameters from a number of uh, options available. So uh, we have already covered the grid search CV in my machine learning playlist. So you may see the link for that grid search CV on top of this video. So now moving, um, coming back to this Keras Tuner, Keras Tuner's library is already available. And this is the library that we are going to use to find the best value of hyperparameters for our model building process. The second thing which I want to talk about before jumping onto the coding is the data set that we are going to use. This is the fashion MNIST data set that we are going to use uh, for our today's exercise. This data set uh, lies with the Keras library. So this is kind of already cleaned data uh, because we do not, uh, because the idea about this video is focusing on the hyperparameter, not about the uh, cleaning the data set. So that's why we are using already cleaned data. So this data, uh, so this data is about a uh, image data set because uh, there are many images of different fashion articles and um, uh, about this image about this data set is like you are given with the fashion uh, you are given with an image of any fashion item it could be let's say top trouser t-shirt uh, pullover or uh, shoes sandal whatever it is and you based on the given image you need to find what you need to predict what the uh, what is that article is so basically the target value of this is our uh, description like what that particular article is and this data set is is an is a data set where uh, it is of you know uh, only grayscale grayscale is uh, you mean uh, that means uh, black and white images so uh, this is the data set that we are going to use so now let's get started with the code part so as you can see that first of all uh, i just imported the few of the required libraries uh, pandas and tensorflow and uh, keras so I just run this code and uh, this all this exercise we are going to do in the uh, in the Google Colab itself. So if I uh, first of all, I can check my runtime as well. Here it is, I have selected GPU. So now the next thing is uh, if Keras Tuner is not installed, uh, we need to install it. And if it is already installed, we do not need it. So uh, basically this is the command with which we can install the Keras Tuner. So because I have already installed, that's why no output has come. So after installing the Keras Tuner, so uh, now we are just importing the Keras Tuner. The next thing what we are going to do is, as I told you that we are going to use the fashion MNIST data. This data is this one which I just told you, it is a grayscale image of different fashion article and we are just directly loading it. So uh, how we can do this since it is with the uh, Keras data set. So we covered, we can do Keras dot data set dot and then data set name and then load data. This function, what this function will do? This function will give me four matrices. It will give me uh, uh, X train, Y train, X test, Y test. So X train in this case is, uh, is my image 
and x test uh, sorry y uh, y train so this is basically y train y train is basically my label of what article it is so it could be an uh, it could be an image of pullover shoes sandal whatever it is um, the same way it will give me image test and label test so you can think of it as this is my x train this is my y train x test y test so this is simple nothing great once this part is done now what we can do is if we if you want to take a look uh, if i run this image train zero so you can see that uh, i was telling you that this is basically uh, image data set but here you are seeing only the numbers so you can see that it is a uh, two by uh, sorry it is a, uh, a 2d matrix you can see that and it has many values from 0 to 255 so basically this is nothing but uh, this is nothing but it is a 2d matrix and uh, it contains values of pixels so um, these are the pixel values and these pixel values are from 0 to 255 because uh, our pixel values range from 0 to 255 and all these are into uh, of uh, basically this these values are uh, of grayscale images the next thing what we are going to do is we are going to normalize the pixel value uh, between 0 and 1 so how we can do this is we can basically divide the each value inside the image train matrix matrix which i just showed to you and we are just basically dividing it with 255 and what what will ha happen ha what will happen after that is that all the values will come uh, in a range of 0 to 1 so you can see that all the value have come 0 to 1 so so far we have done nothing great it's just simple you can think of that an image has been represented in form of pixel and that pixel are in 2d matrix and we just have divided all the value in that 2d matrix divided by 255 because we want to normalize them so the, so far uh, i i think we are good now before we before when we build a model for hyper tuning you also define a hyper parameter search space in addition to the model architecture so for this part uh, we are, what we are going to do is we are going to create a method model builder and we are going to pass this hp hyper parameter it is nothing but it is similar to how we create a model into any of the deep learning model so it is simple it is very uh, simple thing so what we are going to do here we are going to do we are going to uh, define a method and inside that we are creating a sequential model and then we are adding the model dot add and then we are adding keras dot layers dot flatten and input shape is 28 by 28 so what is this this is basically um, uh, this matrix so this is basically this matrix this matrix is of 28 by 28 so what we have done uh, it we are just flattening it so instead of 2d matrix this flatten will convert this uh, 28 by 28 matrix into 1d matrix so we are just adding a layer because we are dealing with the image data sets so inside image data set what we do we just kind of flatten the pixel values from 2d or 3d into 1d so that's what uh, we are doing here and after that the next thing what we can do is tune the number of units in the first dense layer choose an optimal value between 32 to 512 so here what we are doing is we are just creating HP uh, hyper uh, basically hyper parameter. What is that hyper parameter? I will tell you. So dot int. So hyper parameter is this one hyper parameter class. This one. And if what I am doing is hyper parameter dot int. So if I do HP dot int, so you can see that HP dot int fixed float method and this is my int method. So this is my HP dot int. And we can give the name, minimum value, maximum value, step, sampling, default, and parent name. So we are just using the this uh, hyper parameter. And what are what each argument have? Uh, what is the meaning of each argument is defined onto this. So I'm going to drop the link of this uh, uh, this documentation page. You can refer it. So now moving back to here, we are just, what we are doing here is we are just simply defined defining uh, like how many number of units we want to have when i say number of units how many number of neurons we want to have so here we are just defining that minimum we want to have 32 and maximum we want to have 512 you can uh, you can basically 
Do, you can give any number of values, um, whatever number of uh, neuron you want to. The it is basically something you are defining the search space of uh, uh, search space of your problem. So basically, here we are saying that we want to find the optimal value of neurons for our model. Uh, from the range of 32 to 512 so i can diff i can change it to let's say 10 to 1000 as well it depends upon your choice like how how much you want to do uh, the searching so here what we are saying is that uh, number of units basically number of neuron so we are just simply doing sp dot int minimum value is 32 maximum value is 512 and step size is of 32 so then what we are doing well, then we are basically adding model dot add keras dot layers dot then this is how just we uh, this is similar to like what we do uh, while creating our model we add the dense layers so inside dense layer in instead of passing a hard code value we are just passing this value hp units so this hp units value could be anything between this range 32 to 512 and activation function we are passing as a ReLU. the next thing what we are doing is we are uh, this is only the one hidden layer we are taking in this case we can add any as many number of hidden layers we want so basically after this what we are doing is we are basically adding the output layer we have taken as a dense layer as 10 here you can see that keras dot layers dot 10 that means we in this layer we are going to have 10 neurons 10 neurons with why because our problem have only 10 target variables so you can see that it can have 10 uh, value out of these 10 values so that's why i have taken as 10 as my output sorry 10 as my uh, number of neuron in my output layer so now the next thing what we want to do is we want to try out a different hyper uh, our learning rate as well so what we are going to do the sim something similar to like we have given a range of neurons into which we want to find the best value the same way we are going to give a range for my learning rate out of which we are going to pick the best value so this is something similar to this hp dot choice this hp is the object of this hyperparameter uh, class which we are passing into this method and hp dot choice is we can give the name and values out of this so it will give me one choice from out of these values and then the next thing what we are going to do is we are going to basically uh, do the compile of our model uh, for compilation we we are just uh, specifying our atom optimizer and my learning rate is is whatever the learning rate i get from this choice and uh, loss for loss for this i'm since this is a classification problem so i'm using sparse categorical cross entropy this this loss function is used when we have a uh, number of many number of classes when we have only two classes to uh, classify a particular thing so we use binary uh, cross binary categorical cross entropy but here we have 10 classes our output could be out of 10 classes so that's why we are using loss function as pass categorical cross entropy and matrix we have what we want to focus is our accuracy so we want to focus on the accuracy and then we are just returning the model so it is nothing it is a simple method i just created which basically takes an object of hyperparameter class hyperparameter this one and um, based on this hyperparameter we are just kind of giving our model a different values and it will return me uh, a model now after this what we are going to do is we can instantiate the tuner to perform the hyper tuning the keras tuner has four tuner available so there are four type of tuner available with the keras tuner i can show this to you so if i go to keras tuner now inside keras tuner you can see that there are four tuners so these are the four tuners basically they now there are five the base tuner class random search tuner bayesian hyperband and escalon for this exercise we are going to use hyperband tuner so hyperband tuner is something like this so if we want to use hyperband tuner 
we need to give value something like this. So it takes a uh, hypermodal value, objective, maximum epochs, how many times, what is the factor, hyperband, iteration, seed, and all these values. Now, what is the meaning of the, all of these uh, parameters? You can just scroll down and find the meaning of all these parameters. Everything is given in great detail. The same thing we are going to use here. Uh, now, uh, since we have this kt dot hyperband as i showed you that we are going to use this kt dot hyperband uh, so basically if i go here we are going to keras tuner dot hyperband we are going to use this one the same thing we are using here um, this is my hyper tuner model builder and uh, model builder is basically this one this method fine and uh, objective is uh, our objective is validation we want to achieve the higher validation accuracy that means test accuracy how many maximum number of epoch we want to run what is the factor and this is the directory where uh, every like uh, the history of training will be stored and this is the name inside this directory they, this will be the uh, so if i show it to you um, you can see that something like this it will appear so if i run it so you can see that intro to kt this will appear now after this uh, the next thing is we want we uh, uh, we want to have something like this there there is a concept of callback i'm just going to do it in a very uh, small uh, introduction because we we can discuss this thing about later but we are using it that's why i'm this uh, basically explaining callbacks are basically a kind of uh, uh, this is a callback which basically is called when some certain event is triggered. So this is, as the name suggests, this is early stopping. What it means is that uh, if an object, uh, sorry, if uh, during the training, if model has achieved uh, a great, I mean, has stopped improving uh, during the training, like uh, after each iteration, the value, uh, the validation, uh, sorry, validation accuracy is not improving. So it will stop the training. So that's the purpose of this. So what we are doing is, uh, this is present into my stopping. We are just saying that monitor this matrix val validation loss and patients I'm just giving any number random value five. So what it will do, it will stop training early after reaching to a certain value for validation loss. So like it is, uh, it will basically uh, stop training if it has reached to a certain point. So it could be something. So basically uh, the idea about this is like if it has stopped improving, uh, then no point of uh, uh, consuming the resources again and again and then keep training itself, keep going the training. Now the next thing what we are going to use is tuner.search. Inside tuner.search, this is something uh, very similar to like we are passing the image train the x train my this is my y train and this is my epochs this is my validation split and this is the callback and after that uh, using this object i am going to call this method get best hyperparameters so all in all what we are doing is we created a hyper model and we passed uh, using this uh, this me this method basically a uh, model builder and it will return me a model with values of these parameter out of these range. So like uh, for a number of neurons, it may pick some value and it will give me HP units and it, HP units will be con, uh, consumed here and it will add that much of uh, that much of neuron inside my uh, particular hidden layer. And then uh, the similarly HP learning rate will be consumed here. And during the compilation, it will pick that particular learning rate. So now uh, after this, the next thing is uh, we can do the search and uh, tuner dot search image train and label train. We are just passing the what is our uh, training data set. And then using this method, get best hyperparameter. It will give me the best hyperparameters of these things. So number of neurons and what is my best learning rate. So uh, when I will run it, it is going to take, uh, it is going to take, so you can see that the hyper parameter search is complete. The optimal number of unit in first E dense connected layer is 288 and the optimal learning rate for optimizer is this one. So it means that this is saying that 
this much number of neurons should be present in your first densely connected layer because we are only using one dense connected layer you can see that here so we are using uh, while creating the model here we are using only this one only one densely connected layer so it is saying that out of uh, in the range of 32 to 512 the best value you will get with this data set is uh, 288 neuron when you will be having 288 neuron and you will be having 0 0.01 as 001 as your learning rate it may take time but at this point of time it has not taken time because i have already i have trained it once so after this, the next thing is find the optimal number of epochs to train the model with hyperparameter obtained from the search. So from here, we have uh, obtained our hyperparameters like number of neurons and our learning rate. So using these hyperparameter, we want to find like how many times or how many epochs we want to go through our training data set. Because this is also an uh, important factor which basically can define us like how many times we want to go through our training data set because all these things needs resources and resources are uh, costly uh, assets so like uh, if we are uh, training for ha ha number of hours so we can uh, basically uh, we need to give many resources and if we want to optimize this so we want to find all these best thing so that we can uh, use them in in uh, so then so that we can use them easily the next thing what we are going to do is we are going to find the optimal number of epochs so in this code we are going to find number of epochs using this so from the above exercise we have found the number of neuron and number of learning uh, basically the learning rate how much the value of our learning rate should be so now we are going to find how many epochs are the best for my uh, this problem so for this i am going to use the same tuner dot hypermodel dot build and i'm just passing my best hps by best hyperparameters which i got from uh, this and after this what we are going to do uh, we are going to get one object of model and then we are going to train model dot fit and this is my x train y train number of epochs uh, 50 epochs and validation split is 0 0.2 and this will give me uh, model dot fit give me the history object and as per the history inside that history object we have one uh, key as well accuracy so it will give me that well well accuracy per epoch and out of this we are getting the best epoch well accuracy per epoch dot index and we are getting the maximum value of that epoch and we are just printing it so if i run it you can see that now the training has started there are 50 epochs it may take time so i need to pause the video so once this training will be complete uh, we will be back all right guys uh, so our training is complete and using this uh, training we have just found the what is the best number of epochs for our problem so i trained it uh, i trained it for 50 epochs and if i go down there and if you can see that best epochs for this is 50. so uh, it it's it is again up to you how much how big uh, search space you want to define uh, to find the best parameters so here i have taken 50 epochs maximum and it uh, this code actually and this using this keras tuner it executed um the it it did the training uh, for the 50 epochs and for each epoch it found the uh it found the uh the accuracy and it uh, now at last it found that best epochs are 50 well, that means uh, with 50 if epochs we are getting the best validation accuracy which is 89 percent now after getting this best so uh, now we have get the best uh, number of uh, neurons best number of uh, best learning rate should be and we have also uh, get the optimal or the best epochs how many how many times we should go through our training data set we have got that value as which is 50. now after that i trained it with the best hyperparameters so re instantiate instantiate the hyper model and train it with the optimal number of epochs from above so optimal num number of epochs is 550 so i just trained it again that's it and after training it now we it's time to evaluate the hyper model on the test data if i run it 
so we can evaluate like how our model is performing you can see that this is my test loss this is my the test loss i am getting and this is my uh, the accuracy which i am getting is 89% so again uh, again guys the idea here is that uh, if i take you through this once more so here uh, like here when we are creating our uh, creating our model and we are defining the number of neurons let's say for example here when we are defining the number of neurons we can give like any number like 10 20 50 100 200 500 we do not know but uh, using this keras tuner what we can do is we can define a search space search space means that uh, that, that means that for a particular uh, parameter hyperparameter this should be the minimum value this should be the maximum value and uh, this keras tuner will help us that from this search space it will find the best optimal value for us and it will tell that okay you should have this much of neurons in your um, inside your uh, this layer and you should have this much of learning rate you should train your model this much of time or you should go through this much of epochs so the gist about this is that instead of checking uh, manually uh, for different value and then noting down the values uh, doing everything manually and then doing your um, human intelligence that okay i tried with 10 values 10 different values and out of those 10 different value this is the best one but you never know um, whatever the 10 values you, you picked uh, to train or to check uh, the best value was not present into those 10 values so your model will not perform so uh, the what keras tuner will help us keras tuner help us to define the search space uh, for each of the parameter so we can give the minimum value we can give the maximum value and we can uh, help it can help us to go through uh, the training process and it will find the best value for us for different parameters so in this exercise we have uh, found the best number of neurons how to find the best number of neurons what is the how to find the best uh, learning rate how to find the um, uh, our basically best epochs how many times uh, we should go through our epochs uh, the fourth thing we, what we what you guys as a problem uh, as a homework you can try is how to find the how many number of hidden layers should be present in this particular we have uh, picked we have found how many layers should be present into our hidden uh, how many neurons should be present into our hidden layer but what i am asking you to find or to do as a home exercise uh, to find how many hidden layers should be present and this also can be done using with the help of keras tuner so uh, the code the data uh, the link for data and uh, the link for this documentation of keras tuner everything will be into the description box you can go and refer uh, uh, you can refer and check out code will be uploaded on my github uh, and i will paste the link into the description box so that's all for today's video guys and uh, stay tuned for more interesting videos on machine learning, deep learning, and data science. So, uh, if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe it. And thanks for watching.